On November 11, 1995, a middle-aged man was found deceased on a coal train car. He had succumbed to hypothermia and was found in Wright, Wyoming and may have hopped on the train somewhere in Texas. It is believed the white man was of Hispanic like the Cuban descent. Unfortunately, the man was cremated before dental charting or DNA testing could be done. Then, his belongings were turned over to a funeral home which doesn't have a record of receiving them. All that we have today are records of his belongings, photographs, and artist reconstructions of what he might have looked like. In 2015, Campbell County Coroner Laura Sundstrom began investigating the cold case that has become known as Cold Train Carlos. She pointed out many standard procedures that hadn't been followed in the case of this John Doe. No autopsy was ordered, dental impressions were not taken, DNA was not collected, the remains were cremated, and the file was very thin. In addition, the belongings were misplaced, and while fingerprints were taken, they too have been lost. At the time, it was standard procedure for belongings and fingerprints to be sent to the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation, but they have been unable to find anything pertaining to this John Doe. So what information do we still have? The man known as Coltrane Carlos was found on a train that had originated at the Pruitt Power Plant in Richmond, Texas. It headed northwest through Texas, through Denver, Colorado, and Guernsey, Wyoming, before Carlos was found in Wright. It is unknown when he died precisely because his body was described as frozen. The route the train took would have a 7 to 10 round trip, but train manifest records only went back to 1996 at the time Sundstrom was looking for information, and this would have run at the end of 1995. Curiously, Carlos's official cause of death was altered on February 28, 1996, from natural to accidental. Without a body or any evidence to have re-examined, I wonder what prompted the change in heart to the then coroner at all. Based on the examination of the John Doe at the time, he had been diabetic, but no insulin or medication to treat diabetes had been found with him. No food or water had been found with him, and he had been improperly attired for travel through the Rocky Mountains in November. In addition to clothing, shoes, and jewelry, he had a lighter, and there were a number of cigarette butts found in the same train car he was. If we put those two together, he may have started the journey with cigarettes as well, but no food or water. The rail car he was found in had 12-foot high walls, so he couldn't have easily discarded garbage remains. Moreover, there were no signs of human waste, something that would have been inevitable if he'd had food for this journey. Now, as for escape, it is possible he didn't realize there wouldn't be ladders or something along those lines on the inside, but would he have not realized he would still need food and water? Especially if, as his high blood acetone levels suggest, he was diabetic. The John Doe, known as Coltrane Carlos, was found on November 11, 1995, in Wright, Wyoming. He may have originated in Texas. He was white, likely Hispanic, perhaps of Cuban descent. He was believed to have been between 40 and 50 years of age when he died. He had graying black hair and a beard and mustache, and his beard was neatly maintained and had recently been shaved beneath. He had brown eyes. Given his surroundings at his time of death, he was not particularly dirty. He was 5 foot 1 inch to 5 foot 2 inches tall and weighed between 150 and 165 pounds or 155 to 157 centimeters and between 68 and 75 kilograms in mass. He had three homemade tattoos, one on his upper left arm that read Caridad, which translates as charity a cross on the web of his right hand, and the word Cubano on his left hand, which translates as Cuban. He had a 14 centimeter long scar on his left hip. He was extremely underdressed for the weather, as previously mentioned, and could reasonably have succumbed to the cold anywhere in Colorado or Wyoming. He was wearing a short-sleeved purple button-down shirt, brown pants, undergarments, and light-colored socks, as well as yellow Cuban heel loafers and a brown belt engraved with the French surname Morion. Nearby was a green vest made in the style of a Mexican blanket. He was wearing a watch and a silver-colored pinky ring. 
He had no ID and no family pictures, but was carrying three keys. The data doesn't state what kind of keys. Because of the initial coroner's report, as well as the tattoo on his left hand, it is my personal opinion the hypothesis that his ethnicity could be Cuban is a sound one. The shoes are described as having a Cuban heel rather than being Cuban imports, so it could have nothing to do with his origins, and such heels appear to be fairly common in a variety of men's footwear. I questioned the French surname on the belt initially, but one must consider that while there is a dominant Hispanic population in Cuba, there have also been people who have emigrated there from European countries other than Spain, including France, as well as from other islands in the Caribbean Sea, such as Haiti, which, again, has historically had a large French population. If the Morion surname belonged to Coltrane Carlos, which is merely a guess based on the limited available data, it wouldn't be unusual for a man of Cuban heritage. While I cannot venture a guess toward what circumstances led this John Doe to the train the car that led to his death, I have to speculate he didn't intend to be in it as long as he was. He wasn't dressed for a journey through Colorado and Wyoming in November. He didn't have provisions. Since coal cars have ladders built into the outside, he might not have realized there were no ladders on the inside when he fell in, so he wouldn't have been used to riding the rails. That, or he didn't enter the train car of his own volition, but that seems unlikely. There were no indications of trauma in the report and nothing to suggest a fight. Regardless, this man is unidentified and his ashes interred under the moniker Unknown Man. Everyone has family and friends somewhere in this world and they should know what happened to him. The John Doe known as Coltrane Carlos was found dead of hypothermia in Wright, Wyoming in a train that had originated in Richmond, Texas, specifically the Pruitt Power Plant. He is believed to have been between 40 and 50 years of age, had graying black hair and a beard and mustache, and brown eyes. Notably, he had three homemade tattoos, the word Caridad, meaning charity, on his upper left arm, a cross on the web of his right hand, and the word Cubano, meaning Cuban, on his left hand. The surname Morion was etched onto his belt. If you have any information regarding the identity of Coltrane Carlos, please contact the Campbell County Coroner's Office at 307-687-6179, referencing case number 95-6624. Please bear in mind in any discussion in the comments that this case involves a real person with a real past and somewhere a real family and friends who don't know where he is and approach the topic respectfully. You will find links regarding the case as well as the contact information for the investigating agency in the description. As always, thank you for watching and good night.